So what's obesity? Obesity simply is carrying too much unhealthy fat. What is it caused by? It's caused by two things. It's caused by diet and exercise. Your brain needs fuel. And when it needs fuel, it tells you to eat. But your brain is lazy. Your brain doesn't want to spend a lot of energy converting that food into energy. What it wants to do is it wants a food that, it, that is very quick for it to use. Sugar, glucose. Superfoods will help us do that by giving us the health benefits, which gives, makes us feel better, allows us the energy to exercise, by giving us the taste that gives our tongue an alternative, by giving our brain the fuel that it needs. Hi there, I'm Russell Parker and it's great to be part of this Eco Talks event. I was born in Ireland, but I've spent most of my life living in Australia. And in both places I was taught about malnutrition, but the lessons were very different. In Ireland I was taught that malnutrition is equal to starvation. More recently in Australia, I was also taught about malnutrition. And it also leads to disease and death, but the connection isn't starvation. In fact, the connection is the opposite. It's eating too much. How can this be the case? How can both be true? Let's use an example. The USA is the wealthiest country in the world. They have the means to make sure there is no starvation in that nation. And yet today, over half the population are suffering from a preventable chronic disease. And this isn't a situation where they've suddenly dropped their spend on health. In fact, the US continue to spend more on health every year. Today, the US spend two times more, the government spends two times more per head of population on health than the average of all the other wealthy countries in the world. What's the problem? Well, the problem is that all that spend on health isn't solving their big issue, and that is that Americans are too heavy. They put on too much weight. In fact, two-thirds of all Americans are either overweight or obese. One third of all adults are obese and that's increased 30% in the last 15 years. So what's obesity? Obesity simply is carrying too much unhealthy fat. What is it caused by? It's caused by two things. It's caused by diet and exercise. And why is obesity bad for us? Because it causes preventable chronic disease like the ones on the chart behind me. Recent studies show a direct connection between obesity and up to 13 different cancers. And we know there's a correlation between obesity and overweight and mortality and death. This is actually a problem that is throughout the developed world. This chart shows that in the top left corner we do have the USA. We also have Europe. We also have Oceania, where Australia is from. And we have increasing across the world. This is a global issue. This is a global issue that we need to resolve. So let's ask ourselves, so if obesity is so bad, and it's diet and it's exercise, why are so many people eating badly? So let's think about that. So consider for a moment the food that you think tastes the absolute best. What's your guilty pleasure? You ask me that question, and I'll tell you it's those things. It's chips, it's sugar, it's fried food, it's hamburgers. Why? Because they taste great. The, the salt and the sugar in these foods light up my mouth, light up my taste buds. In fact, there are studies that show that the endorphins, the endorphin rush you get from sugar is actually addictive. So it's not a surprise that I, well, I love these, the taste of these foods. There is another driver, and that is your brain. Your brain needs fuel, and when it needs fuel, it tells you to eat. But your brain is lazy. Your brain doesn't want to spend a lot of energy converting that food into energy. What it wants to do is it wants a food that, it, that is very quick for it to use. Sugar, glucose. Sometimes your brain says, I tell you what, give me a simple carbohydrate, because that's easy to convert. And guess what? Your tongue then says, yes, please, let's have some potato, deep fry it, and throw some salt on it. And so that's why we love these foods. 
But what's the issue, right? They're fun, they taste great. Well, there are some issues, and that is that these foods aren't always the healthiest. These foods don't have all the nutrients you need to be really healthy. They don't have all the nutrients you need to feel great energy. But what happens when you're storing fat, not feeling very energetic? Well, the last thing you feel like doing is exercising. Guess what? We're now in a spiral, putting on weight, not exercising, eating the wrong things. So we have to break that cycle. So what do we do? Well, a simple answer is, let's just eat healthy food. I'm not suggesting for a moment that the only answer to obesity and, and preventable chronic disease is a perfect diet. We're humans, we're not perfect. The answer can't be perfection. But it is about breaking the cycle and moving to the other side. What do we need? We need a superfood. Well, the good news is these things do actually exist. So the businesses that I work for have been in superfoods for 80 years. Nulax and Melrose since then have been producing lots of superfoods, all of which are high in health benefits, high in nutrients, and taste great. So how does that link back to the previous chart? So some of our foods, our essential reds, our essential greens, and our prebiotic powders, are all made from those fruits and vegetables and berries. They give you the same great benefit of those fruits and vegetables and berries. Our fish oil and our flax oil very high in omegas. That's the same, that you get the same benefits you do from those wonderful oily fish. And our coconut oil and our MCT give you all the same brain and digestive health benefits that you would get from natural coconut. The other great thing about all of these is you can take them with you because they're concentrated. We've gone and found exactly the right ingredients with the highest nutrient content so that it can be packaged into a smaller package. You can take it to work, you can take it on holiday, you can take it on your travels, you can take the healthy food with you. And they taste great. Um, don't just take my word for it. When we launched the Essential Greens, we were blown away in China at the way consumers spontaneously, you can move from an unhealthy diet to a healthy diet, and it can be fun and inspiring. And this is what starts to break the cycle. Of course, it's important that we select the right ingredients for our superfoods, and in reality, that's where we spend most of our time. We study history, we study people, we look at what's worked in the past, and we do research and development, we test things, and we find the best possible high health benefit, high nutrient ingredients. We then take those and we combine them, like any food technology company would, so that we can really um, boost the health benefit. There's a question I get asked a lot, is, well, why do I need superfoods? Why don't I just have my diet? and I take supplements, vitamins, for example. And you can. Um, I'm not suggesting that superfoods replace supplements, or even should. They're an alternative to, and in fact, can exist along with. But let's take an example, because there are some, ex some cases where superfoods have some extra benefits over vitamins. In this case, vitamin A, we all know the benefits of vitamin A for our skin and our, our eyesight and our immunity. And you can go and buy it from lots of great brands that will sell you a vitamin A. Or, you can get it from wheatgrass, and wheatgrass that, that we put into our essential greens. But there's some differences. When you take the vitamin A in the wheatgrass, it's existing with the natural nutrients, or the nutrients that exist with naturally. It's in, the, it's in a natural dosage. And those other nutrients help your body absorb the vitamin A, help make sure it's as effective as it can possibly be. They also help manage that toxicity. So vitamin A, actually, if you take too much, can be toxic. Whereas if you take it in its natural form, they combine to protect you and keep it safe. So we would argue in this case, it's more effective. But you're not just getting the vitamin A, right? In wheatgrass, there are lots of other vitamins and minerals and, and lots of nutrients. And all of these combine to give you other benefits. Wheatgrass is great for inflammation and detox and energy and managing blood sugar and, and cholesterol. So in this case, it's more effective than an isolated vitamin. And then lastly, we spend a lot of time making sure we select the best wheatgrass that tastes the best, and so we also have that benefit too. Superfoods will help us do that by giving us the health benefits, which gives, makes us feel better, allows us the energy to exercise, by giving us the taste that gives our tongue an alternative, by giving our brain the fuel that it needs. So in summary, starvation is not the malnutrition problem of the developed economies, but they do have a malnutrition problem. And we've got to find a way to break this cycle, this cycle of too much salt, too much sugar, too much of the unhealthy fats. 
and start to move across to more natural, high nutrient, high health benefit foods. But we need help, and that's where superfoods can help. So superfoods will give us access wherever we are, and superfoods will allow do it in a, a natural way, but also allow us to do it alongside our imperfect diets. And I think the reality is I don't know the future of food, but I'm pretty sure it won't be perfect. It'll be a combination of really great tasting but not so healthy foods, and also some healthy foods, and that's okay. I think a more interesting question is if we want to avoid preventable chronic disease, and therefore we want to reduce being overweight and obese, the answer is in diet, and diet will then lead to exercise, and that's the future of healthy eating and healthy food. Thank you very much.